Hello everyone. I just met an extraordinary man. His name is um, Mr. Shane uh, Grammer and he's actually an artist and he came to Oak Park and he drew this amazing mural of Miss Harriet Tubman. I'm going to back up a little bit so you guys can see it. And he drew this mural of um, Harriet Tubman and I wanted to speak with him to kind of pick his brain and find out where is he? Where did he come from? He just came out of nowhere. He drew a mural in two days. That was, what day was that again? That was Monday and Tuesday. On well, Monday and Tuesday, and then he left like a thief in the night. Night, And then I was asked to come to this location. I was like, Harry Tubman, oh, Martin Luther King. Amazing. So we'll get into that a little later. So I just want to talk with him and pick his brain. Who are you, Mr. Shane Grammer? Yeah, hi. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of find out his upbringing and where did, he, where did he come from and how did he become an artist and how long and he was sharing some really intimate things with me and I want to share with everyone else so I'm going to go ahead and let him speak and hopefully you guys can hear him because the noise behind me is kind of loud and um, I'll let him take it from here so I wanted to pretty much start this conversation off with where you grew up at. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> So I grew up in, I was born and raised in Chico. Chico, is, everyone knows Chico as a party town, college town. Um, and it's uh, about two hours north of Sacramento. And that's where I was born and raised. Zero culture. Um, it's all college and ranches, basically, is what it is. But I, but I always loved basketball. I played basketball through junior high and high school. I always loved hip-hop and rap. And uh, I didn't have any... Back then, that's like the 80s, early 90s. There was no influence of graffiti or street art uh, until I went to Butte College for about a semester and a half. And Butte College is a, a JC right out of Chico. And I saw a documentary called Style Wars that uh, documented subway graffiti art in New York in the late 70s and our uh, late 70s and early 80s. Blew my doors off. I had after that. I, I had to be a graffiti artist, and I'm a Christian, so I don't do it illegal. You know, I, so I, I'm like going to youth groups. I'm painting youth groups. I was painting fences. I even practiced in a beehive company uh, or a honey company that was in Durham, which is even smaller than Chico, out in the cuts. Uh, and then I moved from there to work in an inner city youth ministry, and I lived on Six Mission, San Francisco, for about three years, four years. And, and that's when my my expansion of street art graffiti just just exploded. Wow. That's you, the four pillars. Yeah. Tableism, hip hop, graffiti, street art, different uh, Yeah. <laughs> DJ, B boy. Uh, oh, yeah, B-boy. Yeah, right, oh, break dance. That was the thing. I sucked at that. <laughs> <laughs> I never even tried it. I, I wasn't that, um, I wasn't that coordinated. <laughs> Body-wise, it just wouldn't allow me to do that. Yeah. So, you know, I know you share with me about mental health or getting, which I thought was really interesting because a lot of people in our communities, they're having a lot of trauma from childhood and growing up in either abusive uh, homes or um, you know not getting the love and support that they need so you have a little similar story to that and you talked a little bit about how you were able to overcome that and just uh, be able to just evolve mentally and how, how what is that how does where does that come from you know in regards yeah. of how do you let go because I know you say you did extensive counseling yeah you know, and I just kind of want to touch on that because it's very important. There's a lot of people out here who really hold on to a lot of baggage and and things that they just cannot let go. They cannot let it go, so it holds them and hinders them. Sure. So my my real dad I never met. Um, he was a heroin addict, and he actually wanted my mom to abort me because he didn't want to deal with a kid. Uh, they weren't married, um, and he ended up dying when I was about five years old. Um, I heard he was a good guy, just had major issues with drugs, he couldn't kick heroin. Um, and then my mom, my mom had a really bad uh, upbringing. She had a stepfather who was molesting her for, since she was like 10 to 16, and tried to rape her one day out, out in the middle of the field, and she finally scratched him in the, in the face and told him, if you ever effing touch me again, I'm going to kill you when you pass out drunk. That's my parents. You know, my mom, the first year when I was born, for that first year, I was put into a foster 
home so she could get her life in order and get help and get fixed. Then she married my stepdad, who was a raging alcoholic when I was two, and he didn't like me because I was from another man. Um, so I can articulate all that because as an adult, I spent five years of professional counseling because I really, I grew up thinking I was bad. I thought it was my fault. My dad and my mom um, had my younger brother and my dad loved my younger brother. It was almost like he was his new beginning. And so I never felt like I could have intimacy inside the home. I grew up extremely competitive. Um, even in a basketball game in high school, if we won the game, but I wasn't the high scorer, I'd go into the bathroom and just weep because I was trying so hard to be good, to be somebody, somebody great. Um, and that, that I, I couldn't relate to men and women of authority because I didn't know how to have intimacy with my dad or my mom because I was afraid of my dad. Um, and again, I can articulate that now because of a lot of counseling. They say in counseling that from being born to about eight, ten years old, you've already, um, you've, that's your belief system for the rest of your life. And sometimes some people can't get past that. And, uh, and, and there's judgments, there's vows, there's better root expectations where um, every time I would tell my dad or I'd try to reach out to him, um, he would kind of like snark back at me. And I just felt like I couldn't get close to him. And that was, so I started to say as a kid, I don't care, it doesn't matter. And I, I was taking that into my life as a young adult where, I, you know, if I wanted a, a big project or if I wanted to get to know the coach, inside I'd say, I don't care, it doesn't matter. They're not going to like me anyways because I'm not good. That was a belief system that I had deep down in my heart. And that's taken all, and I still have to deal with that. And I don't think I ever will until I get to heaven. But personally, I, I'm a man of faith. I, I have a strong belief in Jesus uh, as my Savior. And thank God my parents got saved when I was about eight years old, started going to church. Uh, things were still hard, but they were a heck of a lot better if my parents kept going the way they were going. Wow, that's incredible. I looked at some of your artwork on Instagram. Yeah. 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 What's your name? Shane, nice to meet you. I'm going to keep listening. Okay. okay. Oh, you're great. Okay, cool. um, so, I looked at your Instagram, and you have some amazing, it's, it's like life-like imagery and, and, and portraits. Like, where, where's your, okay, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it worse, because it's yeah. just so beautiful. It, it really is, and I really will put your link up on this um when I post this video, where does that come from? Like, when did you realize that you had this gift? Well, I, you know, I started, um, I'd say I was about in third grade when I went, uh, I, somehow we got a Walt Disney book and, and I took it in my room and I was fascinated by the illustrations. My first drawing ever was Jiminy the Cricket. So I looked at Jiminy the Cricket and then I drew it on a piece of paper. My dad thought I was lying. He goes, oh, you trace that. And he goes, make them bigger. And then he always tells the story. And then I go back, and two hours later, I come back, and Jimmy the Cricket's bigger. And then, so that's when my family started to kind of, okay, this guy can draw. But, but I never really, I just kind of took it for granted. You know, it's, I didn't really pursue it. But I, I appreciate school, because school always had, like, um, you know, like, one time my teacher was like, we we're learning about Africa, so I can make an African mask. All the other, all the kids would make cutouts out of a eight and a half by 11 I spent like two weeks I built this like cardboard mask with grass and you know three dimensional pieces and I painted it and I come walking in with this mask as big as me and you know the teacher's like oh my gosh you know and, still, and then I wouldn't do anything creative for a while so that was kind of my how I did it until I got in high school then I started taking classes all the way high school and then uh, I worked construction after that I didn't really have any direction at all. Um, really wish I did. My parents are really good about saying, uh, you can believe in anything, you can do anything that you put your you know, your mind to, set your mind to, and you work hard, but there wasn't, and I don't think they even had that. There wasn't a lot of direction on, well, how do you do that? And I didn't start getting that until later on in my life. Uh, but then, um, a little, a few years after high school, that's when I, some things happen and I was like, I, I gotta pursue art. I've gotta do this the rest of my life because I, I just love it so much and I have such a deep passion to be creative. 
so when was your first project on buildings how does that you you know how does that start where you go from paper to actually painting murals what was your first project in painting a mural yeah well i i always get inspired by other artists and i think it's that competitive nature in me from you know basketball back in the days but it's like you know i'll walk like walking down mission street in san francisco back in the 90s barry mcgee this guy used to write twist loved his stuff super political and he'd do this screw and and one day you know like one day walking down or the next day you walk down mission nothing was there and then there's like a twist and i i'm just like i gotta do this you know i gotta figure this out so i don't remember the first one that i did but i know probably around the, the early 90s i started just asking like youth groups churches uh, hey can i do a graffiti mural and then and then i started getting into sculptures and props and all kinds of stuff and um, but later in life, um, I was like I'm, a lot of my work is in the theme park industry, um, and, but it gets really controlled, you know, because you're doing a project for a client, so it has to be designed, and everybody has to build it the way it's designed, and and I get that, and and I know how to do that, but I like it when I can just walk up to a wall, and I'm no one's in my way, and and the client goes, you're the artist, that's my favorite. And I could just paint and maybe improvise a little bit, you know, towards the end if I think it'll look better. So what was your first wall project in what city? Well, I've done work all over the world. Um, I've painted in Peru, Brazil, Cambodia, Mexico, um, uh, and then all over the U.S. I'm I don't remember my first It's been year. so long, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I, I totally get that, especially doing it for so long. You're probably like, um, yeah, I, I don't remember. I've done so much. So what was your proudest mural? Like your one that you said, like, step, took a step back and like, wow, I really did oh, that. Yeah, that's, okay, so my, my, uh, my proudest moment, which really changed my life, was in 2019. Uh, it, I was trying to step away a little bit from the theme park industry because it was just boring. Yeah. You know, and I wanted to be creative and expressive. And uh, the city of Paradise basically obliterated by a fire and burned down. And, well, I had two dozen friends that I grew up with in Chico, because Chico and Paradise are like 18 minutes apart. And uh, uh, I, so I had like two dozen friends that lost their homes in the fire. Mm -hmm. And when on Facebook... I saw my friends, uh, Shane and Jennifer Edwards, they posted what was left of their home and it was just a chimney. And, and he, it's funny, he's a Christian rapper, living in paradise, you know, but but it's amazing the stuff he does all over. And so I'm, I hit Shane up and I'm like, dude, I'd love to paint on your chimney. So as a Christian, I've always been doing, for about 20 years, I've been doing a series called The Bride. And the bride is, I always do portraits of women. I love doing women portraits. Well, we're beautiful. I, I can understand. Yeah, yeah, you are. You are. And uh, there's a book in the Bible called Song of Solomon, which a lot of Christians call, it's like the love story. It's the love letter. And a lot of people feel it's an allegory story where the king in the story is Jesus. And the Shulamite woman is mankind, his beloved bride. And so... When I went up to Paradise and my buddy Shane and Jennifer, they were like, yeah, come up and paint. We'd be honored. I painted a woman's face and on this burnt chimney. And it, no pun intended, but it, it, it went like a wildfire. And it, what, uh, there were stories of people pulling over and getting out of their car and weeping because it was the first beauty, glimpse of beauty that they saw after they lost everything. I mean, people dispersed overnight all over the U.S. because they had nowhere to go. They were sitting at Walmart and Chico in tents, sleeping on the ground. Um, they business Not only their home burnt down, but their business burnt down, so they had nowhere to work. So it was pretty devastating. It still is for many people. Well, because of how that affected so many people, I went around, I painted a memorial, uh, I painted... Uh, a, girl, a woman's daughter that I we went to high school together, um, and I painted like over over 20 murals in a year. I burnt cars, vans, auto garage, uh, buildings, chimneys, everything. And 
uh, and, and, and now I have friends for life because they just, people started to, to organically go to the murals and then they would meet people. People coming from the Bay Area or all over the world would meet because they wanted to take a photo. And then they ended up, end up becoming friends and going and seeing all the murals together. Now most of them are gone because of the cleanup, but that was the, that was what really changed my heart. And our, I'd say not change my heart, but put a stamp on my heart that I've got to continue to do projects that bring hope to people that are broken and downcast. That is so beautiful. The fact that you connect people through your art um, is, is, is a, a real inspiring story to know that you took something so dark and gloomy and, and turned light into it. You know, um, that just speaks volume of who you are. You know, um, what do you what do you. What would you like your legacy to be? You know, I know you're not done yet, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how? I'm all about legacy and memories. I'm, I'm yeah. big on memories. So, what, what would you like your 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 memory to be? Like, how? If someone was to say something about you in regards of who Shane was, who would Shane be? Well, number one, I want God the Father to say, "Well done, good and faithful servant." That's number one. Um, and then I want to always know, I want people to always know that I love my wife well, and then I love my three daughters well, and was a good dad. And that, that is extremely, especially in our time now, there's a lot of fatherlessness. And, um, and so that's, that's number one, that's important. And then yes, I, I want my, I want to inspire other artists. I want to inspire other people. I want a 10-year-old kid from Oak Park to walk by this mural and, be, and see it and go, I've got to be a muralist the rest of my life. Or I, I want to be an artist now because of this and how, this, how deeply this communicates. So I'd say that's definitely the legacy that I, I want to leave. Yeah, well, I thank you so much. And I know this is not the last that we will see of you and your great work and do you do you one day plan to have a museum or you just like to be outside just oh, doing your own no, thing no see I, I want <laughs> crazy stuff like if there's an earthquake I want to like repel from the top of, and paint like this beautiful image right there because it's it's amazing you can have a devastating situation and if you paint something beautiful it completely can change the narrative and, and I just I'm fascinated by that so you see something devastated, you can automatically see something beautiful in that devastation. Is exactly. that what I hear you saying? Exactly. So that's why you brought up the earthquake. There's still hope. Yeah. You know, I know that there are people broken in Oak Park. You know, there are people broken in Cambodia. When I went to Cambodia to, to paint where there's brothels for girls down to five years old. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that. I've never oh. been to Cambodia. Oh, my God. Your well, first, okay, so your first, is, so you went there to paint, right? Well, I, I have a friend that was a missionary for uh, an organization called Agape International Missions, AIM. And they, uh, they it, it was a uh, husband and wife that were pastors in, in Rockland. And they learned about human trafficking in Cambodia. And they just, they were done. They were like, peace out, we're out of here. They went to Cambodia. And they went to the worst place. And Swipe Park is about a 30 minute, 30 minute Tuk Tuk taxi drive from Phnom Penh, the capital. And that's where people from America, uh, China, Dubai, you know, uh, Europe, they all come there. You can have sex with a girl down to five. You can do whatever you want. There are people that are sold, and they're sold by family, neighbors, friends, community. Um, you know, if, the, if somebody wants a TV and they need 300 bucks, they can sell the girl. And that's it, they're done. They're in a brothel. Um, I went into a building and they had a staircase that went upstairs. There were nine stalls down below. A staircase that went up to the top and it was painted pink. And they called it the Virgin Room so you could pay higher amounts of money to have sex with a virgin girl. That's Cambodia. So yeah, I, you know, same thing. I, I'm a guy that cries at chick flicks. So I'm going there. I can't. It's heavy. Yeah. There were people coming while we were painting with kids that were coming to find kids to have sex with. And that's just what they do. But Oak Park is the same thing. Sacramento is a horrible spot. Sacramento is a, is a stopping ground for girls being transported from San Francisco to at Las Vegas to L.A. And it's heartbreaking because in America, 
uh, girls are from the streets are pulled in from like 11 to 14. And then we see a prostitute, you know, on the street corner and judges, you know, saying, oh, she wanted to be that. She, you know, who knows? She might have been raped by her own dad and neglected. And then, you know, a, a pimp starts to give her money and buy her clothes and take care of her. And then all of a sudden she's doing a favor. Now she's a prostitute for the rest of her life. And then drugs, and then she's manipulated mentally and told that she's nothing and worth nothing. And, and that's happening. Sex trafficking, well, I, trafficking in general is a bigger industry than drugs globally. And I don't see very many marches for that. Yeah, right it, it's, it's very devastating. There's a lot that's going on in this world. Uh, it's so much stuff that it, you can't even pinpoint one thing, you know, yeah. but it's always been that way. It, if, it, you, it if you honestly think about it, it's, it's always been that way. They, they say there's more slavery now than there ever has been. That, that's what I've heard. Yeah. And and if that's true in our mod, in our supposed to be modern world, that's extremely sad. Yeah. Well, so, you know, and the farther that we get away from God and leave, taking them out of schools and, you know, not really um, being our best people our best selves to each other and love it, love thy neighbor and all that stuff is it's going to continue to get worse. But one thing I can say that there's people like you who understands and gets it, you know, and, and want to bring beauty amongst all this darkness, just like your, your George Floyd uh, mural that you painted. Where is that painted at, by the way? It's in West Hollywood. It's called Fame Yard. Fame Yard is where a lot of international artists will, will paint. There's a couple beautiful Kobe Bryant's in there. Um, so Fame Yard is right on Melrose and uh, the store that's out in front is called Sporty LA. That's where you get good kicks. Okay. <laughs> good kicks. Good kicks. See his right kicks. <laughs> he stated he worked hard for his kicks. Oh yeah. I had to work every weekend, Christmas vacation to get my Jordans back in the days. Okay. Uh, you're talking 88, 89. Uh, yeah. 90. Yeah. B boy days. <laughs> That's what Jordan was his prime. And, mm -hmm. Oh man, that was good basketball back then. Yeah, and the politics of it and everything has changed. But it has to. There has to be a change in order to make change. There has to be a change yeah. in every in every area. You know, so I get it. Um well, I get it. I understand, you know, some things has has to happen in order for it to get better but i do want to thank you so much for taking time to talk with me and tell me your story and just opening up and being candid and honest about who you are what you do in your background and you know caring so much for communities all over the world you know and it speaks like i stated it speaks valid of who you are and and what you do and your thought process yeah well thank you and if i could say one more thing it's just to encourage you know your your viewers and listeners it's it's all, I mean, that's what's cool about America. I know there's a lot of major unrest right now, but there is freedom. There's freedom to go to college. There's freedom for me to come and paint a mural. There's freedom for us to be able to do something because that's, it's we the people that make this world yes. change. And we have to stand up and fight for the things that we believe in. And, and we have that ability to do that. And this is, I'm just one guy that's using my gift to hopefully better the world and better communities. Thank you so much again. And I most definitely will post your Instagram, your Facebook, and all your other information on there. And um, I look forward to seeing more of you. I'm following you now, so Thank I you. most definitely will see more of you. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs>